Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. My name is Drake. We had a lot of news happen on Friday. Um, we have some news on the Solana ETFs. We also have news um, concerning the SEC and their powers. We had some big Supreme Court cases, some other court cases, district court cases. Um, and we also had a big presidential debate. So we've got a lot to unpack today, guys. So stick around. You're going to love this video. Uh, but it is the first of the month, guys. And if you have watched my channel for very long, you know that every month we choose a different sanctuary to support. And so that is today. The new sanctuary that we are trying to help out this month is Flip. Flipside Sanctuary. Now, guys, these these guys are very cool sanctuary. Um, I'm just going to read you this quick little paragraph here. It says, established in 2015, Flipside Sanctuary strives to provide a safe haven for abused, abandoned, orphaned, and neglected farm and companion animals that have no place to go. Our goal is to rehabilitate and nurture these animals in, in an environment that they can, where they can th thrive. So guys, right down here, it says that they have rescued over 350 animals to date. So these guys are doing some amazing work. I will leave their a uh, link to their page, which is flipsidesanctuary.org. I will leave that in the description of the video. Um, these guys are a 501c, uh, so anything you donate, you can go straight to their front page. Again, they have a donate now on there. They've also got a link tree, a Patreon. They've got wish list and Amazon uh, wish lists, uh, Chewy and Amazon wish lists. So you guys can send them things that they need. Uh, but anything, like I said, anything you donate to them, they're a 501c nonprofit. So anything you donate goes to help you when it comes tax time as well. So go over and check these guys out. Guys, they have a really cool, if you click on the about us uh, thing, just read through their story on how they became a sanctuary. These guys, they have a a little blurb about uh, the cow that they saved that just kind of uh, set the entire thing into motion with them kind of deciding to get into the sanctuary um, and rescue uh, business. I say business, it's not really a business, especially, you know, nonprofit, but um, really cool story here. So go over, check them out, read about who they are. And if you have a few dollars, just go ahead and, and help these guys out. They could really, really use it. And I always appreciate anybody who, who can go over and help these animals out. So head over, check them out, donate a bit. And I will leave that link to their page in the description. It's just flipsidesanctuary.org. Uh, but let's get into the news. First off. We, uh, in my last video, I reported that Vanek had filed a Solana ETF application, and I was kind of speculating on whether they would go at it alone or whether we'd see more trickle in. And Friday, we did see that happen. 21 shares filed for an application for a spot Solana ETF. So we are seeing more and more uh, filings for Solana ETFs. What would really be big is if we saw iShares, which is BlackRock. If BlackRock files for a Solana ETF, guys, we are going to see some fireworks. Uh, but, you know, this is just continuing to snowball. So good news here. Um, the the other thing I want to get into is the the this debate we had, guys. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to get into a lot of the politics of it, but 
if any of you guys watched it, wow. I mean, the whole thing was, uh, you know, this guy's the worst president we've ever had. No, this guy's the worst president we've had. No, I'm good. At, I'm very good at golf. You should elect me. Well, I'm better at golf. You know, I mean, an entire five or 10 minutes about who's better at golf. And all I could do was shake my head and go, rich old people and their golf. Uh, but um, I, I watched it in hopes that maybe we would have a question about cryptocurrency or something or somebody would bring it up. And although that didn't happen, we did have one candidate that did bring up blockchain. Now, I say that um, because this candidate was barred from taking place in the debate, and that's RFK, you know, Robert, Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, but what he did do was he set up his own little stage and kind of had a debate with, with the uh, CNN coverage, and then he was able to show his viewpoint on all of the questions. So he called it the real debate, and I will leave a link to that in the description if you guys want to go over and check that out. I mean, it actually lends an angle to it that isn't just complete nonsense craziness. Um, and he did have some, some good points. So if you want to check that out, go over and check it out. It's the real debate by RFK Jr. But I do want to play you a clip where he does mention, uh, you know, inflation and the national uh, debt and blockchain, guys. So I am going to jump over and, and let you guys listen in on that. Or what would you do? Well, I, you know, I and I agree with you. And Social Security is not an entitlement. Social Security is a contract. Workers put six percent of their income into a, <laughs> you know, into a fund, and they're told that at sixty-five they're going to get that money back. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a, an entitlement. It is contractual, and the government. The United States government would be outrageous if the United States government did not live up to its full faith and credit of paying back those obligations, uh, even if it has to reach outside of the Social Security system to get it. And what we need to be doing is winding down our military commitments. We need to unravel the war machine. We need to solve our chronic disease epidemic, which is the biggest cause, 4.3 trillion. And we can do those things very quickly. I'm going to cut the military budget in half during my first four years. I'm going to use AI and blockchain to eliminate waste in government to save more money. And I'm going to get rid of the chronic disease epidemic. And ultimately, that's going to save us a lot of money. And this has to be a priority for us. I, I, I also want to say this, that I was astonished by President Biden's claim that we have the best economy in the world. We have, you know, I see kids every day. None of this generation is going to get into a home. And that's going to destroy the American middle class. The American middle class, the greatest economic engine in the history of mankind. When I was a kid, our country owned half the wealth on the face of the earth. And it was largely because, one, we had a, an industrial base after World War II, but most importantly, we got every American into a home. And because they were in a home, they had equity. They could borrow money. They could bet it on a business. Back to sin. And that's what's going to draw. So, guys, first of all, by no means am I endorsing uh, RFK Jr. I just thought it was interesting to see somebody who actually brought up blockchain. Um, and I thought, I thought he had some pretty good points. Um, but in, in no means am I endorsing one candidate or the other. Honestly, I, like I've said multiple times, I don't 
participate, really. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not in favor of any of them. Uh, but he did bring up blockchain. And I, you know, I, I can't believe Trump didn't, you know, if, if Trump, Trump's come out recently, the past month or two months or so, and has been very vocal about Bitcoin and crypto. Um, and so for him to completely drop the ball on even, you know, saying anything about it, honestly, to me, kind of signals that he really doesn't understand it and honestly doesn't really, in my opinion, probably doesn't really care about it. So, you know, whatever, uh, but go over and check that, that, uh, the real debate out. Um, interesting watch for sure. Now, another thing that I want to, um, bring up was there was there was a, a statistic brought up in the debate um, and and in mainstream media, and that is I'm going to jump over to this article, this this statistic. Two in three, 67 percent, nearly 70 percent say they are tired of seeing the same candidates in presidential elections and want someone new. Okay, <laughs> a little bit to unpack here, but if the overwhelming majority of people do not want this election, do not want these choices, the only question I have is, do you really believe that we have a democracy? Because if this is true, and there are 70% of people do not want these two, do not want this choice. How is that a democracy? You can have one or the other. You can either have, you know, uh, uh, two candidates that the people don't want to vote for. Or you can have a democracy where the most wanted person gets to go to election. Um, so I don't know, guys, I've been saying for a long time that the illusion of democracy in this in this country is a bit ridiculous. But this is just blaring proof that we no longer have a democracy, guys. The overwhelming majority do not want this election. So just something to think about. Um, the next thing I want to jump over to is uh, getting into the Supreme Court cases that happened on Friday. Now, this one says the Supreme Court strips the SEC of key enforcement power to penalize fraud. So what this means is, you know, before this, since uh, I, I can't even remember uh, how long, I think the 80s, but the SEC, typically what ha happens is if the SEC determines you are uh, fraudulently offering securities or are guilty of some kind of securities fraud, they sue you and you have to pay a penalty to uh, settle with them. And it's all handled internally inside the SEC. So they kind of decide that you're guilty. And that is no longer how things are going to work. You know, the, the court said right here, a defendant facing a fraud suit has the right to be tried by a jury of his peers before a neutral adjudicator. So in tr instead of the SEC charging somebody and instantly being found guilty and having to pay a fine, now they have the right to go to court and have a case in front of a jury. So this is a huge, huge thing, guys, for um, for the SEC. Huge loss for the SEC. Uh, now they have to be accountable by the courts for every case they um, want to charge with fraud, which is going to be pretty big for the uh, cryptocurrency, you know, uh, sector because 
before there were there were a lot of um cases where the sec just charged somebody mila kunis was one you know for her nfts um Crocken was another and if you guys if they want to fight that they have to go out and file a court case you know it's not just something where they can say well we're not guilty we're gonna go we're gonna go to court they actually have to go out they have to file a court case they have all these other hoops that they have to jump through to get a fair shake in the courts um and now they don't have to do that they don't have to be assumed guilty before they go to court and try and fight back against that so now it just makes it a whole lot easier to kind of defend yourself against the SEC if you're if you're being accused of securities fraud. So that was a huge loss for Gary Gensler and the SEC. And then on top of it, the Supreme Court strikes down the Chevron uh the Chevron deference or the Chevron um uh doctrine and what this does what the chevron doctrine was was basically um if if congress passed a law that was somewhat vague the chevron doctrine allowed for federal agencies like the sec to make their own interpretations of that law and and take enforcement action based on their own interpretations now what the uh supreme court said was no that's that's misguided what we're going to do is we're we're going to repeal this this uh doctrine and federal agencies like the sec no longer have the power to interpret the law they can't go out and make their own interpretations of Congress's laws. So this is kind of, uh, you know, one implication of this is it's going to make Congress, uh, Congress is going to be pretty big, busy. You know, they're going to have to pass laws that actually say, uh, you know, they're very specific so, so that agencies can actually do their job. They can't just pass something and hope hope that agencies you know figure out what they were trying to say and what this really goes goes back to is the the howey test and the howey test is one of these laws that is very vague and it was written you know 80 years ago or something and really doesn't fit cryptocurrencies so and that's what the cryptocurrency industry has been saying for a long time so now the sec can no longer take the howey test and use their own interpretation of that what we're going to have to have is we're going to have to have congress pass a more specific law when it comes to cryptocurrencies for sure uh not to mention several other industries and areas that that congress are going to have to to address but i just want to read this little blurb right here it says under the chevron doctrine if congress has not directly addressed the question at the center of a dispute a court was required to uphold the agency's interpretation of the statute as long as it was reasonable so basically what that said was under Chevron, if, if what the SEC's uh, interpretation of the law was, was reasonable, then the court had to uphold it. And that is no longer the case. So <laughs> another huge, huge defeat for Gary and the SEC. This takes a lot of their power away when it comes to crypto. And... Congress is going to have to get on it and pass something that makes sense. We do have Fit 21, just saying, uh, which would solve that problem. But um, this kind of lights a, a fire under 
under Congress's butt to get something going on, um, you know, whether it be Fit 21 or something, because the SEC technically has no more power to claim that cryptocurrencies are securities. So, uh, in another court case, guys, this is not Supreme Court, but this was a district court. It says breaking Binance's BNB sales don't qualify as securities. Judge dismisses the SEC's claim. In a big win for Binance and the crypto community, Judge Amy Berman Jackson has dismissed the SEC's claim that the secondary sales of Binance's BNB coins qualify as, a secur as securities under the Howey test. Judge Jackson cited a similar decision by Judge Annalisa Torres from the Ripple case, stating that it is essential to weigh the economic reality of the token transaction while applying the Howey test. And it goes on, guys, but this, uh, this economic reality that she kind of mentions is that, um, going back to that Ripple case and Annalisa Torres's decision, once something gets on the secondary market and is traded on exchanges like Coinbase or Binance or Kraken, it's a blind bid ask. So when I buy a token off of Coinbase, I don't know who is selling that to me. And where I don't know that person and they don't know me, it can't, there can be no securities contract. So you can't classify them as securities. So just another court upholding um, this, this thing, this ruling by Annalisa Torres in Ripple. Uh, another big loss for the SEC. This, guys, this all happened on Friday. <laughs> I, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot happened on Friday. So, um, you know, Friday was probably inarguably the worst day that the SEC has seen maybe ever. You know, two Supreme Court cases taking power away from the SEC and then the SEC losing this, this district court case as well. Not a great look for the agency but in the other news the last bit of news that we had like any four-year-old toddler that has been reprimanded for bad behavior guess what the sec did right after the the supreme court said no you cannot do this anymore guess what the sec did SEC sues consensus over MetaMask staking and broker allegations. So <laughs> right after the uh, Supreme Court said, no, you can't do this anymore. The SEC went out and, and did, did, the, did the dang thing. So uh, they, they accused consensus or MetaMask of being an unlicensed broker, which is um, kind of crazy because MetaMask is just a wallet, basically. I guess you you can kind of buy and trade um, directly from the wallet, and I guess that is what the SEC is claiming, and they're claiming that that MetaMask is an unregistered broker, securities broker. And the real the real thing, guys, is they they named two uh, two coins as securities they named lido and rocket pool so really when you read into this these are the only two that they named as securities on metamask and what those two coins are is their coins for platforms that stake ethereum so really what the SEC is doing here is they're going after Ethereum staking. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's crazy to me 
that the Supreme Court comes out and says you, you no longer have the power to interpret the law, the Howey test, and, and make your own interpretations as to whether these should be securities or not. And then they go out and they do it the same day. Um, I think this case is easily won, especially considering that, that the Supreme Court made a ruling that they can't do this. I think consensus easily wins this. Um, but it's unfortunate because they are going to have to spend millions of dollars in court to do so. So anyways, guys, that is about the news that happened over the weekend. If you guys liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share with anybody that you, you think would like this video. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.